Hi, I'm David Pope from Clinical Edge, and welcome to today's five minute physio tip on the cervical spine and contraindications and red flags to performing manual therapy. So the first question is, what are, what's the difference between contraindications and red flags? So your contraindications are where you absolutely should not perform any manual therapy, manipulation or mobilization on the cervical spine, and your red flags are symptoms that might indicate that you've got a contraindicated condition in your patient. Once again, you shouldn't be performing manual therapy on your patients that have your red flags either. So the second question is, what are the red flags and contraindications for your patients that you want to perform manual therapy on their cervical spine? So in 2010, there was a really nice journal article in the Journal of Manual and Manipulative Therapy. And it was by, I'm going to murder his name, but it was Puente Dura and colleagues where they looked at all the different contraindications and red flags uh, in 134 different case studies of uh, incidents that had happened following cervical spine manipulation. So they listed these really clearly, and I'm going to walk you through each of the contraindications and red flags, refresh your memory, make sure you're totally up to date on all of those for the cervical spine, and make sure you've been nice and, nice and safe with your manual therapy. Alrighty, let's talk through our contraindications to cervical spine manual therapy. So first off, we've got acute fracture, obviously of the cervical spine. We've got acute soft tissue injury, dislocation. Once again, all these are going to be related to the cervical spine. Doesn't mean a dislocated glenohumeral joint, but you're probably not going to do cervical spine manual therapy in that case either. Osteoporosis, ligamentous rupture, and in particular, uh, the ligaments in the upper cervical spine, ankylosing spondylitis, instability, rheumatoid arthritis, so you're looking at any of those inflammatory conditions, tumors, vascular disease, infection, vertebral artery abnormalities, acute myelopathy, connective tissue disease, recent surgery, or anticoagulant therapy. And that's worth asking about in your patients. Are you taking any anticoagulants? And if they are, you're gonna be much more careful or you're gonna avoid manual therapy in the cervical spine in case of causing a bleed. We don't want to affect those vertebral arteries. So most of these are looking at your inflammatory conditions, any uh, dislocations or interruptions to the, st the stability of the vertebral segments, and any blood flow issues. So moving on to red flags for cervical spine manual therapy. We've got the previous diagnosis of vertebrae basilar insufficiency, or VBI, any facial or intraoral anesthesia or paresthesia. So that's worth asking about. Do your patients have any, any altered sensation in their mouth, lips, face, anywhere like that? Do they have any visual disturbances? Dizziness, vertigo, blurred vision, diplopia, nausea, tinnitus, drop attacks, dysarthria, dysphagia, or any symptom listed above aggravated by positional movement of the neck? Or, any, or if they've had no change or worsening of symptoms after multiple manipulations. So with these, basically you're looking for any of these symptoms that you can ask, do you have any changes in your vision? Do you have any difficulty swallowing, difficulty pronouncing words, or any changes with your speech? Or have you been uh, having any drop attacks? If someone hasn't had any changes or improvements after they've had multiple manipulations or manual therapy, Obviously, they're not a good candidate for manual therapy, so don't carry that on. Now, our other red flags for cervical spine manual therapy are if they've had pain, but it's not altered by movements, positions, or activities. Now, obviously, physio and any other manual therapy is most effective in treating mechanical pain. And if the person's pain isn't altered by movements, positions, or activities, it's not as likely to be mechanical pain and then manual therapy is not indicated. If they avoid rotation and don't like looking down, they could have an upper cervical instability. And you can relate that back to their history as well. We talked about some of those contraindications. If they had a rheumatoid arthritis, they could be likely to have a disruption in those upper cervical ligaments and have this upper cervical instability. So keep an eye out for that one. If they have a history of injury, uh, so in particular, any external force applied to the head, so if they've copped a tackle to the head or any other sort of impact or maybe a motor vehicle accident 
or they've had any dental work recently, that's a red flag for your cervical spine manual therapy and something you want to investigate to make sure they don't have any instability in their cervical spine. And lastly, cord signs. So remember the signs of a cord sign are a stocking or glove distribution of, of para or anesthesia and or ataxia. So ask particularly about those. So those are the contraindications and red flags for cervical spine manual therapy. So you know when it's a good time to avoid doing any manual therapy on your patients. So if you found this video anywhere else besides on our blog at clinicaledge.co, head on over there and check out all our resources we've got for you there.